You're watching the Guns and Blazes. What's going on everybody and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and before we get started with today's video I want you to let you guys know because I know some of you guys I was surprised to see you didn't know this but I have a second YouTube channel called Rock and Roll True Stories where I talk about cool stories across the history of rock and roll about different bands and uh, the link is down below if you guys want to go check it out but I'm uploading about three videos a week and that's where a lot of my focus is going to be from this point onwards. I'm still going to be doing all the stuff I do on GNR Central, but I really feel like Rock and Roll True Stories is like the sort of like the creative outlet I need after being kind of burned out on Guns N' Roses for the last two years or so. But let's take a look at the comments that you guys had for this week's videos. So the first week, um, for the first Monday, um, I put up uh, a video uh, about how Axl Rose apparently deleted a Guns N' Roses song. Uh, during the recording of Chinese Democracy, we interviewed a guy named Dave Dominguez, uh, who was an engineer on Chinese Democracy for about eight months, and he told a story about how This I Love is not the same song that you hear on Chinese Democracy. And there's a little message at the end of the song that he heard where Axel basically tells Stephanie Seymour that he loves her, and he requested that he delete that part of the song so that nobody would ever hear it. And Dave said he was kind of worried about doing that because he's like, what happens if Axel changes his mind? You know, this is something that Guns N' Roses fans are never going to hear. And he said that was the only time that Axel lost his cool in the studio. He said every other time Axel was really cool with him. So here's what you guys have to say about it. So Teddy Max said he really lost his cool, but you can't blame him. He did have mental issues that needed serious health attention. Um, another comment said... Um, Max Vicious says, to be a GNR fan account, you only talk about his bad days, which is not really true. We talk a lot about the good stuff, too, about Axel. I mean, that whole interview we did with Dave, Dave was talking really positive about Axel, what he was like to work with. And every guy that I've interviewed who's worked with Axel has had nothing but good things to say about the guy. So I really ask you to do your research instead of making a blanket judgment like that. And at the same time, even though I'm a GNR fan, I think if you guys want honest opinion, then you're going to have to take the good with the bad. I mean, this isn't GNR truth or here today gone to hell where it's just propaganda from the band. So here's what more of you guys had to say. Uh, April Tackett said the whole song is about Stephanie Seymour. Hell, every love song in Chinese democracy minus If the World is About Her, and we all know it, but I'm not mad about the change. Uh, I also talked a bit about Frankie Perez um, almost fronting Velvet Revolver. He's right now playing a Deadline Ritual with Matt Sorum, and uh, that's the super group that they're going to be touring uh, later this year. And Ricky Boy said Frankie Perez did, almost the voc did most of the vocals when Slash headlined the Court Festival. I was there in uh, Norway in 2009. Slash and his ex-wife Perla got an all-star band with Slash, John Five, Chris Chaney, um, a Teddy Andreas, and, and Jason Bonham, Ozzy Osbourne, Ronnie Wood, and Fergie made guest appearances during the show. It was a great show, and Frankie sang really well. He would have been a great, a good fit for Velvet Revolver, at least vocally. And then uh, Jeff said, keep up the good video, guys. Thanks for the great comment, Jeff. And then Soleil said, Axl Rose, stop erasing the Guns N' Roses songs, you son of a bitch. So another video I uploaded this week was about uh, his former flame, uh, Stephanie Seymour, and whatever happened to her after her and Axl broke up. And you guys had a lot of opinions uh, about... Um, about Stephanie Seymour. So here's what you guys had to say. So one of your comments was, Axel hasn't been in a long-term relationship after his breakup with Stephanie. I think he still had feelings for her from a long time after the breakup, and who knows even maybe to this day. Don't forget the info Sid gave us at the ending of This I Love that never became public. Yeah, I mean, the one thing you guys have to remember is Axel was basically a hermit between like 94 and 2000. So I mean, he, I always read that he was in a three-year relationship with Jennifer Driver, who was in the Since I Don't Have You video. But I never found out where that info actually came from and whether it was verified. He may have had relationships, but maybe because he was out of the press, you know, everything was really, um, was it was really, uh, you know, hush hush. So um, a lot of people were saying they had trouble hearing the Howard Stern interview. I, I had no trouble hearing it. Like at least the, the audio was fine on my end. Uh, but I'll see if I can improve the audio on that. Uh, KBLP said Axel is better without Stephanie. Axel needs someone like Aaron back in his life. Axel and Aaron would still make an amazing couple today, and Axel can be, be a great father figure for her little daughter. So if you guys haven't seen it already, I did do a video about Aaron Everly and whatever happened to her. She's had some trouble with the law over the last like decade or so. She had a couple like a run-in with. Um, with the police once and then uh, she's, she's got a couple kids and she did go to some Guns N' Roses shows and she tried to auction off some of Axel's stuff that she had from back in the day but it seemed like things were kind of cool with her and the Guns N' Roses camp because she's obviously been going to the shows. 
Now, April Tackett said, I've, I've noticed a trend of female teenage GNR fans loving Stephanie, and I never get why. Her entire career was built on how many men she and her mother slept with. It's really not that impressive. I hope she's enjoying sleeping with the man who married her for a trophy. Amusingly, I wrote this before watching the video and seeing the part about Peter having a bust of a maid of her. Axel's better off without her anyways. Now, I never knew that Stephanie Seymour was famous because, or at least I never interpreted it that way, that she was famous because of the men she slept with. Sure, that was this part of her life that was really sensationalized, but it was actually because she was a Victoria's Secret supermodel as well, and she built a whole career. She had her own product line and that kind of stuff. Now, but generally, when you guys look at the comments, it seems like everybody seems to side with Aaron Everly over Stephanie Seymour, and I kind of agree too. So the other upload I had this weekend, it was one of my more popular uploads, was the things you missed in the Live and Let Die video. So I've done a video like this for every single Guns N' Roses video, but I haven't released all of them yet. The only ones I haven't shot yet are The Garden, which there's really not a whole lot of you know stuff you may not have noticed, and Paradise City, which I just haven't had the time to do. But let's talk about your comments. And um, Amanda said, great video. When Live and Let Die was released, I personally thought it was one of the most badass GNR videos. It was cutting edge technology and GNR flashing was the coolest thing ever. I love the nostalgia of being incorporated from this past tour. I have video of it and will cherish it always. Very cool about the there being an Izzy pin, and that's something I would buy. He can never be replaced. Take it easy. So if you guys remember, I, some guy, I can't remember the name, I think it was Pop something. They sent me an email one day. And they had these two GNR pins. One was like a, a pin of Axel's Converse shoes that he used to wear back in the day. And the other one was a milk box with Izzy on the front. And they said, hey, you know, we like your channel. Would you be willing to show these on your channel? I said, sure. So I remember I did that. And then um, you guys seemed like you really liked the Izzy pin. And I know some of you guys even ordered it. But I thought it was cool. I, I still have the pins lying around somewhere. But uh, yeah, I, I'm glad that you guys found some new stuff you hadn't seen before. Um, Fonseca said, I remember when it aired on MTV and I thought the same. If only the day he, he if only one day he would open his vault, we could check all the kick ass early ninety one shows. I, I couldn't agree more with that. Uh, Amanda said, after this day, I pulled up Rock and Rio 91 just to jam, and I wanted Izzy, so you know that's almost a challenge. And that was a great show. I've been listening since the beginning of 91, 92. Those were great years. Cheers. Now, Arthur said, funny thing is, it was NWA who were putting on an act all along. I always thought that NWA is a legit act. I didn't realize that some people said they were putting on an act all the time. Uh, Fonseca also said, Little Axel has a black eye in the last photo. Is it the result of beatings he always described? So if you guys watch the very last part of Live and Let Die, there's like the um, there's the photo of Axel when he's a kid. I didn't really notice that. I'm, I just thought it was maybe the lighting, of the way the photo was shot. Um, Bruno also said um, some other facts. The first live scene of the video of Live and Let Die, he's wearing a chest protector. That was recorded in St. Louis in 91. The Use Your Illusion shirt that Axel's wearing in the photo shown, it's a gift from Versace. So that was cool. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, Carlos said, at the 519 mark, I think the missing with Izzy photo is because Izzy had quit the band when this video came out. He did appear in the You Could Be Mine video, but on the Don't Cry, he was already out, and he was supposed to have a scene with Axel that Axel ended up doing himself. So Sam also said, actually, I'm pretty sure Doug Goldstein said in an interview that the monitor with the lyrics wasn't if Axel forgot the lyrics. Doug said that they would play the songs that often Axel wouldn't forget the lyrics after singing them hundreds of times. He said that the monitor was used for when Axel would stop a song so himself and the band knew where to start again. That's something really interesting. I, I didn't hear all of Doug's interviews lately. I, I, like, I know he was on Appetite for Distortion, but I didn't have a chance to listen to the whole thing. Um, I did want to acknowledge one mistake I made in the video, and you guys pointed this out. So Bruce said, I've always thought the picture in the back of the Live Era CD was from the Tacoma Dome concert from July the 16th, 1991. I do believe that's correct. I think I had my dates mixed up a bit. Um, some of the other comments said, uh, yeah, one person said the picture on the back of Live Era is from the St. Louis Ride Show. I don't think it is. I think it's the Tacoma, Washington show. Because um, I, think, I, I think I did go check Robert John's book, and there's a photo of that, and I think it is from the Tacoma show. Um, Beatrice Bertrand said something really interesting. She said the MGM Grand Plane tail fin can be seen at the one minute and six second mark. I'll have to go check that out. And if you guys don't know, I've already done a video for the things you missed in all of the trilogy videos. Don't Cry, November Rain, and Estranged. There's a link down below um, uh, to the video for Live and Let Die. You guys can go check out. Uh, Dan, Denny said Axel had so much fashion back then. I agree. I think his fashion back then was much better than what it is uh, these days. Now, not all of you love the Live and Let Die video. Arthur said, what a cheap, lazy video. Did this actually air on MTV? So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching, and be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. Also, go make sure to check out my other channel, Rock and Roll True Stories. I'm starting to, I think this week I'm going to do four videos this week, because I've been shooting a bunch of stuff for that, and, and I've been covering a ton of stuff, you know, from the grunge era 
all the way to like the Beatles, to the Stones. Uh, I've done some stuff on The Clash that's going to be coming out soon too, as well as a highly requested band, which is Nine Inch Nails. Um, I've talked about that a bit. And then I found a really interesting guy who's like written like 160 some songs all the way from like Aerosmith he's worked with to Katy Perry to Kiss um, that maybe you guys haven't heard of. So that's going to be coming out later too. So thanks for watching guys. See you later. Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah!